but I prevailed in the end, so I'm, I'm happy, of course. Okay, we'll go for the old Alyokin's defense. Take and g6. Let's see what he's prepared here. If anything. Yeah, bishop. Bishop c4. Can go. I think you can go bishop e6. Let's see what he does. Just castling, huh? Okay, knight d7. I don't remember your theory here, so I'm basically improvising, but one of the points here is I wanna, with going east, bishop d6, is I wanna possibly save on c6 so that I can go c5 in one go at some point. And I might may have some tactics like if if he had moved the if he had moved the knight like knight f three maybe I could have gone knight e three win the bishop pair bishop c four and even though I'm a bit behind in development I still just need bishop g seven castles to get a good position so I, I was not so worried about that rookie one feels a bit soft to me. Um, Okay, I'm gonna take it. And then I think I'm gonna go bishop g7. Because I feel like obviously the exchange stack is a very typical theme, but as long as I can castle queen side, the weakening of my king is not as important and thus it shouldn't be all that dangerous. Um so I had an idea here. Um, knight c3 is not very attractive to me because uh, knight c3 happens and then um, he gets to develop with tempo. Uh, I can go bishop, knight to e3 and then if he goes bishop b5 check, I go c6, I take, he takes, and if bishops, either bishop c3, uh, bishop e3 or fd3 protecting d4, I go c5. Now I've sacked a pawn, but I think I do get some positional compensation. It is this two adventures for a Tuesday night. That is the question. Okay, whatever, enough wasted time. I'll just castle, not like a normal kid. And um, uh, yeah. Um, I have castled now, but I didn't think that he was going to sack in exchange uh, after he, he'd lost the tempo. Um, I can go c5. Not crazy about that move. OK, let me, let me go for a5 instead. Um, c5 is what I was kind of hoping for. I thought I had the opportunity to play dynamically now. The idea is knight b4. And bishop e6 is met by queen d1 followed by knight takes c2. So I'm not sure he's really in time to consolidate. Obviously, if he was in time to take an e6 and then protect c2, my position would be a wreck, positionally speaking. But I don't, I don't think he's in time, and thus I should be should be fine. If he'd gone c3 um, instead of a4, uh, protecting against the threat of a4, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this. And um, I would have had to play you know, in a normal, um, slightly passive way instead. This way, I'm I'm pretty pretty happy. Um, because the whole construction with the bishop on g seven, 
the knight on b4 and everything, all of it makes sense as long as white doesn't get to play c3. And I don't really think c3 is a, is an attractive option here. I guess I can just go I can just go knight d3, or even better, I go queen b1, bishop b1, knight d3, and I actually win material because both c1 and e1 cannot be protected. Um, so in general, I think I'm achieving some of my positional goals here. And I have quite some pressure against this queen side. Probably knight c3 is the best move here. Uh, then I take on b b3. Okay, this is interesting. Um, okay, I don't take back. No automatic moves. I take on c2. And if he takes on f7, I will be a pawn down, but I'm not. I'm not even remotely worried about that. His rook will be poorly placed on a2. I will get rook f to d8, exploiting his uh, somewhat uh, retarded development. And um, here as well, I think just rook d8, and I should be doing perfectly fine. If if I'd gone for let's say knight b4, his rook would have had an avenue to into the game via d2 or e2. Um, but now, well, he does get the rook into the game, but at least I've gained some time. I think I'll go knight b4 um, to create a threat against um, against d3. And if knight d2, I'll go rook c8 probably. And um, here I'll go bishop h6. I don't think he can protect everything. So knight c4, I'll take on take on b3. And I think I should be better. Um, yeah, let's just go rook d4, see what he does with this. No, I probably got a trade. Yeah, he's probably probably gonna be able to make a draw here. Okay, rook c7. Let's try and make it a little difficult for him. I'm obviously short on time, but we're playing on increments, so it shouldn't be a major issue. Rook b3 is a good move, protecting the bishop on a3. And now I do have bishop c1. I feel like he might have missed that. We'll take this one, go e5. Try and gain some space. Oh, I missed rook e5. Now it's going to be a draw for sure. Mm, yeah, that was a that was a bit unfortunate. Okay, we'll take take an a6, e6. Yeah, this is pretty pretty clear draw. But I will I will obviously try and. Push a little bit, see, seeing as I do have an extra pawn. Okay, I'll go e5. Rook c2. Okay, now rook d3, e3 is coming. Not 100% trivial. Pretty far from, from it, actually. As the knights who say knee would not say. Um, oh, f3, that was his idea. Okay, that, that was an unfortunate miss. Still, he had rook before there, maybe. Then he would be able to trap my rook. Sorry, king f6. We'll go back with the king, and we're hoping that his king is kind of shut off. Push h4. Okay, we'll push again. It's not immediately obvious to me that this is a draw. I think we have to get the rook behind. OK, 
in goes. Still, he cannot take because the pawn ending is lost. So it's not a, it's not at all obvious. We'll go check, take on f4, rook f3, and now I win the game. It's a little reminiscent of the game he won against against Maxim in the um, in, in the quarterfinals where he won uh, completely drawn rook ending. <laughs> 